It's the Style Academy. Welcome back. This lesson is going to be about the scheme of balance. If you don't know what a scheme is, you'll have to watch the video called Tropes and Schemes on the Style Academy to get a sense of this. But this video is going to be about one scheme, the scheme of balance. And as you may recall, schemes, there are four different kinds of schemes, and schemes have to do with the way that you construct language in a meaningful way and in an obvious way so that you're uh, to create certain effects with your audience. So this lesson is going to be part one, uh, and it's going to be about grammatical parallelism. The second lesson, which will be a separate video, is going to be about rhetorical balance. And these two things share in common the idea of balance. They're both uh, teaching you a certain way to balance the parts of your sentence. So we're not talking about this kind of balance in this lesson. We're talking more about this kind of balance. That is keeping two parts or aspects of your sentences in counterpoise, in balance with each other, and creating grammatical parallelism. Grammatical parallelism means that you match one aspect of your sentence uh, in grammatical form with another aspect of the sentence. This may be a little confusing at this point, but uh, as we go along, I think it's going to unfold to you. So, grammatical parallelism. Getting into the practice of making your sentences grammatically parallel to create balance is fairly easy. So let's take a look at a sentence. This is a simple sentence. I like cheese and to go to the movies. Now, you probably already know that this is not balanced. There is a coordinating conjunction and, and the articles on the left and right of the coordinating conjunction are not grammatically parallel. You see them here. I like cheese and to go to the movies. They are not balanced. It's just a good rule of thumb to remember that when you're going to use a coordinating conjunction to create compound parts of your sentence, that the two aspects of that coordination should be grammatically parallel, especially if that you're not using a comma in some way. So if we were to change this, I like cheese and movies, now we're set. Those are two nouns. Back here, we have to go to the movies, which is an infinitive form of go, which is a verb. So we have a noun on the left and a verb phrase on the right. We are not grammatically parallel. Now we are. This is a sentence that I took from a, a bottle of fruit juice. It's 70% pure fruit juice, a splash of sparkling water, and fortified with vitamins. Can you notice or detect the part of this sentence that is not grammatically parallel with the other parts of the sentence that are being held together by coordination. Let's take a look. So this fruit soda is A, 70% fruit juice. That's a noun phrase. That, that's what that NP is. B, a splash of sparkling water, another noun phrase. And C, and fortified with vitamins. What kind of phrase is that? It's actually a verb phrase. Fortified is a verb. It's a participial, and this makes it a participial phrase. So we're not grammatically parallel. So what, would, what could we do? What could we change C to? Maybe we could change it to, and seven essential vitamins. Now we have three different noun phrases, and we're grammatically parallel. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Take a look at this uh, sentence here. The word and is the coordinating conjunction, and again, we have a grammatical parallel problem. We have a, a, a compound subject here. The subject of the sentence is a calmly argued point and going out of the way to understand the perspectives of, of others. You can see again that the two parts of that coordination are not grammatically parallel. They're not in balance. The first is a noun phrase, a commonly argued point. The second is another verb phrase, going out of the way to understand the perspective of others. So how do we fix this? Well, we have two options. We can change the second one to a noun phrase, a calmly argued point, and a sincere, a sincere attempt to understand. Now we have two noun phrases working together. Or we can make them both verb phrases, arguing a point calmly and going out of the way to understand. 
you see how that makes it easier for the reader so that they don't have to shift in their mind uh, kind of the grammatical gears of their brain uh, to understand that. Now, I'm not saying it would be super hard to understand if it wasn't grammatically parallel, but this is easier. And you also have kind of the, the aesthetic uh, uh, look of having arguing and going in parallel structure. Why don't you take a look at this sentence? Go ahead and pause the video and read this sentence out loud or just read it to yourself. So this sentence, like the others, has a coordinating conjunction, and. But for some reason, this, the, the and that makes this a little bit complicated to understand. The parallelism gets lost a little bit as the reader reads through it. This is another problem with keeping things grammatically parallel. You see here, this is kind of the, the, the fulcrum of the balance, and that stiffer penalties. When this happens, you may want to uh, reset the minds of the readers to let them know which two parts of the sentence you're trying to make parallel. And here's one way you could do that. So we have, those who have not studied gun control law carefully may not be aware that there are laws already on the books that have not been applied effectively in most states. And they may not be aware that stiffer penalties for gun crimes, etc. Do you see how that resets the parallelism for the reader? Of course, another option would be to make two sentences, but you know, here's one option that you can take to make it more grammatically parallel. Okay, time for exercises. You'll have two exercises here and each one will have some uh, different instructions. So let's start with the first one, go ahead and do the first exercise and then we'll move on to the second one, okay? In this exercise, I want you to just rewrite these three sentences using the principles you've learned about grammatical parallelism here. These three sentences are woefully out of balance, and they need your help. The third one may be an example of a sentence that needs you to just write more reinforcing parallel words or phrases to help the reader along. Go ahead and pause the video now and rewrite these sentences, making them more grammatically parallel. This second exercise is inviting you to be a little bit more creative in the way that you construct grammatical parallelism. You see seven sentences on the screen. I want you to combine the first three sentences, 1.1 through 1.3, to make them one sentence, and then combine the final four, 2.1 through 2.4, into the second sentence. So you should have two sentences when you're done. While you do that, I want you to think about how you can make the sentences that you write grammatically parallel and effective for your readers. Pause the video now and write your two sentences by combining what you see on the screen. And that does it for the first part of the scheme of balance, grammatical parallelism. That's part one. Part two is in a separate video, and you can go watch that right now. That's going to be more about rhetorical balance. 